Sea Fairies and Other Poems by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. The Sea Fairies Slow sailed the weary mariners and saw betwixt the green brink and the running foam sweet faces, rounded arms, and bosoms pressed to little harps of gold. And while they mused, whispering to each other half in fear, shrill music reached them on the middle sea. Whither away, whither away, whither away, fly no more, whither away from the high green field and the happy blossoming shore. Day and night to the billow the fountain calls, down shower the gambling waterfalls from wandering over the lea out of the live green heart of the dells they freshen the silvery crimson shells and thick with white bells the clover hill swells high over the full-toned sea o oh, hither come hither and furl your sails come hither to me and to me hither come hither and frolic and play here it is only the mew that wails we will sing to you all the day mariner mariner furl your sails for here are the blissful downs and dales and merrily merrily carol the gales and the spangle dances in bight and bay and the rainbow forms and flies on the land over the islands free and the rainbow lives in the curve of the sand hither come hither and see and the rainbow hangs on the poising wave and sweet is the colour of cove and cave and sweet shall your welcome be o oh, hither come hither and be our lords for merry brides are we we will kiss sweet kisses and speak sweet words o oh, listen listen your eyes shall glisten with pleasure and love and jubilee o oh, listen listen your eyes shall glisten when the sharp clear twang of the golden cords runs up the rigid sea who can light on as happy a shore all the world o'er all the world o'er whither away listen and stay mariner mariner fly no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Mermaid by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org Who would be a mermaid fair, Singing alone, combing her hair, Under the sea in a golden curl, With a comb of pearl on a throne? I would be a mermaid fair, I would sing to myself the whole of the day, With a comb of pearl I would comb my hair, and still as i combed i would sing and say who is it loves me who loves not me i would comb my hair till my ringlets would fall lower down lower down from under my starry sea-bud crown lower down and around and i should look like a fountain of gold springing alone with a shrill inner sound over the throne in the midst of the hall till that great sea-snake under the sea from his coiled sleeps in the central deeps would slowly trail himself sevenfold round the hall where i sate and look in at the gate with his large calm eyes for the love of me and all the mermen under the sea would feel their immortality die in their hearts for the love of me but at night i would wonder away away i would fling on each side my low flowing locks and lightly vault from the throne and play with the mermen in and out of the rocks we would run to and fro and hide and seek on the broad sea walls in the crimson shells whose silvery spikes are nighest the sea 
but if any came near i would call and shriek and adown the steep like a wave i would leap from the diamond ledges that jut from the dells for i would not be kissed by all who would list of the bold merry merman under the sea they would sue me and woo me and flatter me in the purple twilights under the sea but the king of them all would carry me woo me and win me and marry me in the branching jaspers under the sea then all the dry pied things that be in the hueless mosses under the sea would curl round my silver feet silently all looking up for the love of me and if i should carol aloud from aloft all things that are forked and horned and soft would lean out from the hollow sphere of the sea all looking down for the love of me end of poem this recording is in the public domain recollections of the arabian nights by alfred lord tennyson read for LibriVox.org. when the breeze of a joyful dawn blew free in the silken sail of infancy the tide of time flowed back with me the forward-flowing tide of time and many a sheeny summer morn adown the tigris i was borne by baghdad shrines of fretted gold high-walled gardens green and old true mussulman was i and sworn for it was in the golden prime of good harun al-rashid a night my shallop rustling through the low and bloomed foliage drove the fragrant glistening deeps and clove the citron shadows in the blue by garden porches on the brim the costly doors flung open wide gold glittering through lamplight dim and broidered sofas on each side in sooth it was a goodly time for it was in the golden prime of good harun al-rashid often where clear-stemmed platins guard the outlet did i turn away the boathead down a broad canal from the main river sluiced where all the sloping of the moonlit sward was damask work and deep in lay of braided blooms on moan which crept adown to where the water slept a goodly place a goodly time for it was in the golden prime of good harun al-rashid a motion from the river one ridged the smooth level bearing on my shallop through the star-strown calm until another night in night i entered from the clearer light embowered vaults of pillared palm imprisoning sweets which as they clomb heavenward were stayed beneath the dome of hollow boughs a goodly time for it was in the golden prime of good harun al-rashid still onward and the clear canal is rounded to as clear a lake from the green rivage many a fall of diamond rillets musical through little crystal arches low down from the central fountains flow fallen silver chiming seem to shake the sparkling flints beneath the prow a goodly place a goodly time for it was in the golden prime of good harun al-rashid above through many a bowery turn a walk with vari-coloured shells wandered engrained on either side all round about the fragrant marge from fluted vase and brazen urn in order eastern flowers large some dropping low their crimson bells half closed and others studded wide with discs and tires fed the time with odour in the golden prime of good harun al-rashid far off and where the lemon grove in closest coverture upsprung the living airs of middle night died round the bulbul as he sung not he but something which possessed the darkness of the world delight life anguish death immortal love ceasing not mingled unrepressed 
apart from place withholding time but flattering the golden prime of good harun al rashid black the garden bowers and grots slumbered the solemn palms were ranged above on wood of summer wind a sudden splendor from behind flushed all the leaves with rich gold green and flowing rapidly between their interspaces counterchanged the level lake with diamond plots of dark and bright a lovely time for it was in the golden prime of good harun al rashid dark blue the deep sphere overhead distinct with vivid stars inlaid grew darker from that under flame so leaping lightly from the boat with silver anchor left afloat in marvel whence that glory came upon me as in sleep i sank in cool soft turf upon the bank entranced with that place and time so worthy of the golden prime of good harun al rashid thence through the garden i was drawn a realm of pleasance many a mound and many a shadow checkered lawn full of the city's stilly sound and deep myrrh thickets blowing round the stately cedar tamarisks thick rosaries of scented thorn tall orion shrubs and obelisks graven with emblems of the time in honor of the golden prime of good harun al rashid with dazed vision unawares from the long alley's latticed shade emerged i came upon the great pavilion of the caliphate right to the carven cedarn doors flung inward over spangled floors broad-based flights of marble stairs ran up with golden balustrade after the fashion of the time and humor of the golden prime of good harun al rashid the fourscore windows all alight as with the quintessence of flame a million tapers flaring bright from twisted silvers looked to shame the hollow vaulted dark and streamed upon the mooned domes aloof in inmost baghdad till there seemed hundreds of crescents on the roof of night new risen that marvellous time to celebrate the golden prime of good harun al rashid then stole i up and trancedly gazed on the persian girl alone serene with argent lidded eyes amorous and lashes like to rays of darkness and a brow of pearl tressed with redolent ebony in many a dark delicious curl flowing beneath her rose-hued zone the sweetest lady of the time well worthy of the golden prime of good harun al rashid six columns three on either side pure silver under propped a rich throne of the massive ore from which down drooped in many a floating fold engarlanded and diapered within wrought flowers a cloth of gold thereon his deep eye laughter stirred with merriment of kingly pride sole star of all that place and time i saw him in his golden prime the good harun al rashid end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dying swan by alfred lord tennyson read for librivox dot org the plain was grassy wild and bare wide wild and open to the air which had built up everywhere an under roof of doleful grey with an inner voice the river ran adown it floated a dying swan and loudly did lament it was the middle of the day ever the weary wind went on and took the reed tops as it went some blue peaks in the distance rose and white against the cold white sky 
shone out their crowning snows one willow over the river wept and shook the wave as the wind did sigh above in the wind was the swallow chasing itself at its own wild will and far through the marish green and still the tangled watercourses slept shot over with purple and green and yellow the wild swan's death hymn took the soul of that waste place with joy hidden in sorrow at first to the ear the warble was low and full and clear and floating about the under sky prevailing in weakness the coronach stole sometimes afar and sometimes anear but anon her awful jubilant voice with music strange and manifold flowed forth on a carol free and bold as when a mighty people rejoice with shams and with cymbals and harps of gold and the tumult of their acclaim is rolled through the open gates of the city afar to the shepherd who watcheth the evening star and the creeping mosses and clambering weeds and the willow branches hoar and dank and the wavy swell of the soughing reeds and the wave-worn horns of the echoing bank and the silvery marish flowers that throng the desolate creeks and pools among were flooded over with eddying song end of poem this recording is in the public domain nothing will die by alfred lord tennyson read for librivox dot org when will the stream be a weary of flowing under my eye when will the wind be a weary of blowing over the sky when will the clouds be a weary of fleeting when will the heart be a weary of beating and nature die never oh never nothing will die the stream flows the wind blows the cloud fleets the heart beats nothing will die nothing will die all things will change through eternity tis the world's winter autumn and summer are gone long ago earth is dry to the centre but spring a newcomer a spring rich and strange shall make the winds blow round and round through and through here and there till the air and the ground shall be filled with life anew the world was never made it will change but it will not fade so let the wind range for even and morn ever will be through eternity nothing was born nothing will die all things will change end of poem this recording is in the public domain mariana in the south by alfred lord tennyson read for librivox dot org with one black shadow at its feet the house through all the level shines close latticed to the brooding heat and silent in its dusty vines a faint blue ridge upon the right an empty river-bed before and shallows on a distant shore in glaring sand and inlets bright but ave mary made she moan and ave mary night and morn and ah she sang to be all alone to live forgotten and love forlorn she as her carol sadder grew from brow and bosom slowly down through rosy taper fingers drew her streaming curls of deepest brown to left and right and made appear still lighted in a secret shrine her melancholy eyes divine the home of woe without a tear and ave mary was her moan madonna sad is night and morn and ah she sang to be all alone to live forgotten and love forlorn 
till all the crimson changed and passed into deep orange o'er the sea lo on her knees herself she cast before our lady murmured she complaining mother give me grace to help me of my weary load and on the liquid mirror glowed the clear perfection of her face is this the form she made her moan that won his praises night and morn and ah she said but i wake alone i sleep forgotten i wake forlorn nor bird would sing nor lamb would bleat nor any cloud would cross the vault but day increased from heat to heat on stony drought and steaming salt till now at noon she slept again and seemed knee-deep in mountain grass and heard her native breezes pass and runlets babbling down the glen she breathed in sleep a lower moan and murmuring as at night and morn she thought my spirit is here alone walks forgotten and is forlorn dreaming she knew it was a dream she felt he was and was not there she woke the babble of the stream fell and without the steady glare shrank one sick willow sear and small the river-bed was dusty white and all the furnace of the light struck up against the blinding wall she whispered with a stifled moan more inward than at night or morn sweet mother let me not here alone live forgotten and die forlorn and rising from her bosom drew old letters breathing of her worth for love they said must needs be true to what is loveliest upon earth an image seemed to pass the door to look at her with slight and say but now thy beauty flows away so be alone for evermore o oh, cruel heart she changed her tone and cruel love whose end is scorn is this the end to be left alone to live forgotten and die forlorn but sometimes in the falling day an image seemed to pass the door to look into her eyes and say but thou shalt be alone no more and flaming downward over all from heat to heat the day decreased and slowly rounded to the east the one black shadow from the wall the day to night she made her moan the day to night the night to morn and day and night i am left alone to live forgotten and love forlorn at eve a dry cicala sung there came a sound as of the sea backward the lattice blind she flung and leaned upon the balcony there all in spaces rosy bright large hesper glittered on her tears and deepening through the silent spheres heaven over heaven rose the night and weeping then she made her moan the night comes on that knows not morn when i shall cease to be all alone to live forgotten and love forlorn End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Sea Fairies and Other Poems by Alfred Lord Tennyson.